All right, everyone. How we doing? Um, I am William Dellisford, and uh, right above me, I believe, it could be below me, is Svetlana, the amazing Svetlana. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us this evening um, with our beautiful, for this beautiful presentation on the beautiful art form of jazz. So today, we're going to learn some things about the three elements of jazz. And if you listen hard enough, you will be able to find them in our everyday life. All right. So, wow. The three of these three elements are known as blues, swing and improvisation. The blues is his or her story. That story can be a sad story, it can be a, a happy story, it could be a combination of both. It started off really happy, then it ended really sad. It's kind of like an emotional roller coaster watching a movie. All right. So the next element is swing. Swing is the groove that makes you move. The motion in the potion, the pep in your step, is typically the musical groove you hear in the rhythm section, piano, bass, and drums. Last but not least is improvisation. Improvisation is the freedom to unequivocally express yourself however way you want to. That last part, improvisation, it's how a lot of free spirited thinkers find their individual voice. And hopefully by the end of today, we'll find our each and every one of us to find our own individual voice. OK, now with all these three with all these three elements combined in music, you are given a chance to express yourself with your feelings on a groove that makes you move with the freedom to do so however way that you want to. Jazz is a musical style created by African Americans in the late 1800s while in New Orleans. Of course, it's hard to pinpoint an exact day that jazz was created, but know that it was created over time. And it was a meeting of mixing and melding of many cultures, many emotions and many skills in New Orleans put together eventually what brings us today what we have jazz, like everything else that evolves in life in life. So did the art form and all the artists along with it. During the days of slavery in 1724, there was a space in New Orleans where on Sunday, like today, the, the slave masters would allow the slaves to get together and just be free in, this, in a more confined space, a space where they could express themselves and they were allowed to without being in trouble. This space was later, later known as Congo Square. Now, the birth of Congo Square made New Orleans a culture hub where many other musicians and dancers would come, would all come and call it home. It's also the birthplace to many, many other uh, legends of this art form, such as the ragtime man himself, Jelly Roll Morton, the ambassador of jazz, Louis Armstrong, or the educator of jazz, Alvin Baptiste. Hey and many, many more. With dance being infused in the culture, when the music evolved, so did its dancers. Because of this sense of community back during the 1700s, New Orleans till, till this day still, New Orleans still congregate together in celebration, whether it's because it's, a, because it's an arrival of life, whether it's because it's the departure of life. Every and any moment they can get together in fellowship life, they will put out, they will pull out their instruments and sing and dance in celebration. Not only is this the birthplace of the music, it's the birthplace and the resident of the spirit of jazz. It's almost impossible to visit New Orleans and not find music and dance intertwined like two best friends who've known each other all their lives. So now there's no way we can continue talking about New Orleans without learning a little bit more about the drumming, Congo Square, the second line, all that goodness that comes with it. All right, and also learning about the spirit of New Orleans. To learn more, here's our resident drum professor, Mr. Curtis Noasad, to teach us more about the sound of New Orleans. Hi everyone, 
I'm Mr. Curtis, and what you just heard is called the New Orleans Second Line. I want to talk to you about a very special city, the birthplace of jazz, New Orleans. Now, that groove is called the Second Line because at funerals in New Orleans, on the first line, they play very slow, sad songs like this one. And on the second line, they, they sing happy songs to celebrate. Songs like, When the Saints Go Marching In. Do we know that song? Let's sing it together. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Very good. Um, now, they don't just play this music at funerals. They play it for all kinds of special occasions. At any reason to have a party, you're going to hear a second line. And the biggest party of the year is called Mardi Gras. Can we say Mardi Gras? Mardi Gras. Now, has anyone here seen a marching band? Now, a marching band has got many different instruments in it. You have trumpets, trombones, tuba, clarinet, and you've got the drums. Now, if you look, I'm sitting down right now. I couldn't possibly march if I wanted to. But in a marching band, they have one person play the bass drum out in front of them like this. And one person play the snare drum in front of them like this. And together, they do what I'm doing on the drum set. So, originally marches were very simple. They just went like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But because of the influence of African culture in New Orleans, they added what's known as the Big Four. Can we say the Big Four? The Big Four. So, what that means is we put an accent, which means we play it louder on beat four in every other measure. So it goes like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so what we're going to do together is we're going to clap on the Big Four. So go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, just like that. So I'm going to play the second line, and I'll help you. I'll play a big accent on the big four to help you out. So here we go. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. That's the New Orleans second line. All right, so that was amazing. So now, we are familiar with the big four and New Orleans second line. In the spirit of, new, of jazz and New Orleans celebration of life, here is the Svetlana New York Jazz Collective featuring Alfonso Horn performing a popular folk song entitled Little Liza Jane. Okay, here we go. Little Liza Jane, take one. Uh, mm, mm, a two, mm, mm, a one, two, uh, 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 uh.
Liza, little Liza Jane. Hey, that made me feel good. I hope you all are at home or wherever you are right now. You're up and dancing because I was and uh, I might have hurt my back, but it was a great it was a great experience. All right. So let's continue. Now, while the spirit of jazz was being nurtured in New Orleans. In other regions of the South, the blues was being formed. So now the spirit of the music was able to find words to express its emotion that was born in New Orleans. These emotions were created from the hardship, hope, struggle, faith, life, and death of the descendants of those slaves that came in from many parts of America. We're, we are talking about years of storytelling from the very first slave and their drums in the drum circle at, at Congo Square to the storytelling through dancing to eventually the storytelling through songs from the voice. The blues, the birth of the blues was a byproduct of work songs, field hollers, um, shouts, chants, hymns, and more. When the slaves were outside picking cotton, living a hard life, they would sing their pain to each other, sing their stories about their day, sing their stories about their God, asking for help, singing their stories to each other to give each other's uh, encouragement to help them make it through their day. Imagine having a body filled with emotions, and then a century later, finding the words to express those emotions. As musicians continue to progress and change the way they played their instruments, so did the blues. They brought structure to it, forms, bridges, choruses, and more, all followed by an amazing story that went along with it. Like for example, musicians like Bessie Smith, born April 15th, birthday is coming up, 1894, was an American blues singer, widely renowned during the jazz age, nicknamed the Empress of the Blues. Hey, Ben, you gotta you got imagine how amazing you must be to be called the Empress of the Blues. Now, she was the most popular female blues singer of the 1920s and 1930s. She's often regarded as one of the greatest singers of her era and was a major influence on fellow blues singers as well as jazz vocalists that would later come. Then you have musicians like Sister Rosetta Tharp. Oh, man the mother of rock and roll, who was also one of the most talented guitar players. She took the blues along with her story and crafted an early form of what we know now as rock and roll. Wow. So by the 1920s, the beauty of life is that we all have our own unique story to tell, right? Simply for the fact that we all are different. I, wa I want to think I want you all to think of a story that you have right now that you put into words as we as we listen to this next selection of Svetlana and the New York Jazz Collective. All right. So we all have our own story. I want you to think of what that story may be. It may be of how you woke up today. It may be how you know what what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm going to such and such or what I ate for dinner. We all have our own stories or how I grew up or the love of my parents, the love of my kids. I want you to think of this your story as we listen to this band play their story. This next one is, an, is a popular composition by Duke Ellington entitled, I'm Just a Lucky So and So. One, a two, a one, two, a three, a four. down the street seems everyone I meet waves me a friendly hello hello guys I guess I'm lucky so and so those birds on every tree they seem so gingerly They sing wherever I go I guess I'm just a lot 
just a lucky so-and-so all right so now when i'm listening to that song i'm thinking about all the blues that i that i had you might have recognized the person on piano that was totally might have been me uh had less hair um but when i'm listening to the blues and i'm playing the blues i'm thinking about okay man what's the story that i want to say am i feeling good because blues as an always have to be sad and that's the first thing that we always think. What about the blues? Oh, it's a sad song. But my blues today can be like, you know what? It is Easter Sunday and I woke up today. My kids jumped on my face and said, hello, daddy. And that was my blues. I'm happy. That's my happy story. Or, oh, man, I only got two hours of sleep. Oh, this is my blues. It doesn't matter what it may be. It is, as long as it's yours, which makes it unique. So now let's continue. By the 1920s, a whole new kind of music had evolved, right? So now in the era of jazz, we call swing music, where big bands such as Duke Ellington, uh, Count Basie, Cab Calloway, uh, Benny Goodman, um, and such and such were the main attractions and dancers from everywhere were lined around the clubs so they could be a part of it. 
I said, man, that's Duke Ellington. That's Count Basie. Cap Calloway is playing. Oh, I, oh, I got to go over and dance. It was a beautiful thing. So the Elements of Jazz now introduces another element, which is swing. Now, swing introduces the groove that makes you move. The motion in the potion, the pep in your step. Huh? Come on. I wish you could see my feet right now. They're, they're doing some great dancing moves. All right. So now this brought all of these beautiful elements to the style of music we call jazz. Swing was the groove that you hear the band play. It was all about what kind what's what's your swing that you're going to play. Are you going to play this? Or are you going to play that? But that motion that the rhythm section is playing was is we call swing. It's a very important element in our three elements. Now, um, the story and the spirit of dance has been with us from the very moment it got off the boats and arrived in New Orleans. The spirit has always been a huge part of the culture of jazz, going back from Congo Square to Jazz at Lincoln Center. While the musicians and their music were evolving, so were the incredible dancers of their time. The beauty of swing music just naturally makes you want to get up and dance. When I hear shiny stalkers, do dot, uh, do dit, dot, uh, see that? You just naturally want to dance. And that's the beauty of it. And because of this, a new form of dancing was formed. And this form of dancing was called Lindy Hop. Lindy Hop, also known as the Jitterbug, was developed in the 1920s and said to be the original form of swing dance. The term jitterbug was commonly used to describe swing dancers because of the way they looked when they were on the dance floor. Just the bugs, their jitterbugs with their feet moving fast and bouncing around, uh, jumping around, being flipped up in the air, as you can see on screen. Lindy Hop, which is an eight count dance characterized by a lot of physical movement and a tap on the shoe, continued to evolve in the 1930s with the Savoy Ballroom in Harlem becoming its home and more and more professional dance troops formed around it. So now to speak more on the history of Lindy Hop and teach us a dance move or two, because we got to learn some dance moves, we got to. I would like to share a quick dance lesson with you all um, by our resident dance instructor, Miss Akimi. That being said, if you want to get up and experience the true experience of Lindy Hop, Lindy's Hopper's Delight, be sure to stand up and join us on this next one, okay? Hi everybody, this is Akemi, your dance teacher. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be dancing to swinging jazz music. Have you seen swing dancing? It was created by black American communities in the late 1920s and in the early 1930s. The original name was Lindy Hop. Can you say Lindy Hop? Lindy Hop. The mecca of Lindy Hop was this beautiful, gigantic ballroom in Harlem called Savoy Ballroom. The famous dancers like Frankie Manning and Norma Miller danced and performed at the Savoy. I am very excited and grateful to get to share this dance with you today. Let's get started. Move number one, Charleston. Now we're gonna face this direction. Now we are going to kick forward with your right. Show me your kick with your right foot and then step down. Then can you reach backwards with your left? Reach and step. Good. You're gonna kick forward and step. Reach and step. Kick forward and step. Reach and step. Do you notice that I bow a little bit when I reach back? We can go even lower and then reach backwards. Now, can you touch the ground? Try it, try it, try it, try it. Touch down. Good. And then step back. Now, that can be a variation of the Charleston. So, let's do that a couple of times together. Ready? We kick forward and step. Reach down and then step. Kick forward and step. And then reach and step. Here we go. Charleston. One and two and three and turn. 
Same thing again, Charleston. Again. Kick step. One and two and three and turn. Kick cross. Turn around. And step. Okay. All right. I was trying to get the dance move and quickly get back to my seat. All right. So now, what have we learned? Uh, on go or go, gone over so far. We've addressed the spirit of the music from its very conception when it arrived to New Orleans. That spirit finding its voice now known as the blues through struggle, hardship, faith, and hope um, to tell its story. Then the story finds its groove, which we know now as swing. And alongside of it throughout history has been its spirit, its counter spirit, which is dance. These two have developed and adapted to each other since the very beginning to give us the entertainment that we have now. So now, our, um, to put all that together, the dance move, the jumping, the lindy hop, we want to see if we can get our band to come and play a next song for us, which I believe is a Duke Ellington composition entitled, It Don't Mean a Thing. And let's check out some of our dancers and how they go about performing with the band. So if you've learned the dance routine, I want everyone to get up and join the band on this next one. Here we go. Yes, yes. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And we've been talking about how swing is that, that the groove that makes you move, the motion and the potion, the pep on your step. So it doesn't mean a thing if it doesn't have that groove. It doesn't have that motion. It doesn't have that pep. Ah, the beauty of swing. So now we're on our final element of jazz. Last but not least, this is improvisation. Improvisation is simply the freedom to unequivocally express yourself however way you want to. Think about that. However way you want to express yourself 
say what you need to say, say what, play what you need to play. You can do that. That's what improvisation allows you. Improvisation in the performing arts is a very spontaneous performance without specific or scripted preparation. This is something that we all do every day in life. Uh, when we get up, when we decide on what to do, and in so many ways, the way you improvise when you are trying to accomplish something, I'm gonna get up and go to the store. However way that I do that, I'm improvising. I don't have a scripted plan to say, I am gonna get up and put my shoes on, then put my shirt on twice, and then put my book bag on and then go outside. I'm making it up as I go along, I'm figuring it out. So every day in life, we improvise and we find different ways to accomplish that. Now, throughout the history of music now, we've had amazing improvisers, amazing improvisers who actually changed the way the music, the face of the music and the language have gone about, if you wanna think about it. For example, you got Charlie Parker, right? with his lean, edgy tone, fast, furious notes, very similar to a fast talker. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? I'm okay, I'm okay, how you doing? You know, yes, and I want to do this, and no, no, blah, 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 blah. I got a lot of friends that are like that. Some, some of my friends say I'm like that. <laughs> now you got Miles Davis with his simplistic, cool bop approach, similar to a, a, a smooth, slow talker who's really cool. Hey, how you doing? Eh? Pull my cool bop on that, that's my Miles Davis. Now, or you can have an Art Tatum and his stride multi-hand fingers approach, similar to a multitasker, which I was, Svelana and I were saying, similar to like all the moms that we know. Because your mom is, is telling you not to do this while cooking this, and then, then taking this kid and like, don't do this and do this. And then she did this and then she created a rocket ship. I don't know. God bless all mothers. All right, so now you have Louis Armstrong who is like in his scat approach, which is very similar to a vocal and animated talker. Hey, how are you doing today? I am so happy to see you. Ooh, I like that. Now we also have modern day musicians like Robert Glasper and his fusion of jazz and hip hop and jazz and R&B, jazz and gospel, similar to a popular influencer that you find. Someone who does something and everyone wants to just naturally follow them. All right. With the spirit of jazz, you can find anything in your immediate surroundings. I want everybody to find something in their immediate surroundings right now. And I'm going to find. Uh, OK. All right. This is what I got. OK. All right. All right. I'm going to improvise using this. All right. I have my object, which is my subject. All right. I have my blues, which is my story. I have my swing, which is my groove. And I'm going to keep this groove going on. I'm going to keep this groove. I like this groove. All right. And my and my improvisation will be my approach, which I'm going to go with cool bop because who doesn't want to be Miles Davis? Really? All right. So, okay. I love my teddy bear, teddy bear Willis. Willis is my teddy bear because he's the coolest. All right. I'm hearing all the I'm hearing all the applause. It's all around the world. Like, oh my God, that was the greatest. All right. So that was my uh poor attempt of my improvisation with my teddy bear Willis. Oh, I think it's a old bear. Okay. Um, so that being said, even in dance in the 1940s, when the music grew uh from swing dance to Charlie Parker's Bebop, which is a fast tempo complex rhythmic approach tap dancers like baby lawrence jackson were lockstep along with them baby lawrence an extraordinary jazz tap dancer who had a profound influence on dancers performed with some of the history's greatest bebop kings such as charlie parker dizzy gillespie uh bud powell baby lawrence is regarded as an authentic jazz dancer who further developed the art of tap dancing by treating the body as a percussive instrument with Baby Lawrence's approach to bebop and improvisation, finally, he was able to fuse the two spirits of jazz, which is music and dance, and made them whole. That's, that's an amazing thing. So, like before, at this time, I would like to provide you a quick, quick tap dance lesson um, to get a better understanding. For those who have never tap danced, who have never tried it, this is the perfect time to try it. 
we're going to learn a, a, a simple step. And so that you can see how tap dancing or moving uh, your feet that way connects with your body, the physical and the percussive nature of the art form. That being said, let's go ahead and pass it on to our, our instructor, Duet Fleming Jr. Hey everyone, my name is Dewitt Fleming Jr. and I'm a tap dancer. Today we're going to talk about improv. Improv is short for improvisation. Improvisation is where you make it up as you're doing it. One of my favorite dancers who was a great improv dancer was Baby Lawrence. Baby Lawrence was called the bebop tap dancer, as in bebop jazz. Bebop jazz was huge for improvisation, and so was Baby Lawrence. I'm going to show you two steps to take an improv on your own. It's called step, step, stomp, stomp. It's very simple. You step and step, and then you stomp, stomp. Now when you step, think of if you were in a quiet room and you wanted to tiptoe around. Step, 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 step. Now when you stomp, you want to put your whole foot on the ground, maybe like you might be upset with someone. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Now, I'm going to improv and then I want you to improv. So I'm going to take step, step, stomp, stomp, and I'm going to mix it up and do it in any order and any rhythm that I hear in my head. Here we go. That's improv. I just improvised on step, step, stomp, stomp. Now I want you to try. Think of a rhythm in your head and use step, step, stomp, stomp and do that rhythm. Ready? Try. Good. And that's improv. You just made it up right now on the spot. So from now on, whenever you hear some music, why don't you improvise? Try using step, step, stomp, stomp, or whatever step you want. This is DeWitt Fleming Jr. I'm a tap dancer, and I'll see you next time. All right, and get the stomp. Okay. All right. All right. I hope you all um took advantage of that lesson and you were able to learn how to do step step stomp stomp i've been practicing it i'm not gonna lie to you now i would like for everyone if the spirit moves you to get up and join the band on this next one it's a gershwin composition entitled i've got rhythm one two one two three
thought about moving my ankles that much <laughs> i was like oh oh okay this is fast all right so that was the that was the svetlana new york jazz collective um that was duet fleming's jr on tap dancing now uh just to wrap it up before we we open up for q and a's um just want to say this last thing now what i love the most about improvisation is simply the idea that after learning everything that we worked on that we discussed these this past hour, such as emotions, feelings, groove, dance, you can shuffle every single one of those around in any combination you want, any speed, any volume, any level of aggression or, or, or whatnot, and make your own unique thought statement idea. Think about that. So we put all that together. Now I could put it all together, you could put it all together, but however way that you put it will be different than mine's. And that makes you unique. The other side of it, we could actually say the same thing, which is I love jazz or I love teddy bear, my teddy bear Willis, uh, my teddy bear Willis, because he's the greatest. I can't remember. Nonetheless, you could recite the same thing that I recited the same way that I recited, and it still will be unique to you because of who you are, the way you speak, your voice, everything that makes you unique. Therefore, you can only be yourself, and that's the beauty in that, all right? Now, also, because of this uniqueness uh, and the importance of it, it tends to make it to utilize our voice in the most positive way. So since my voice is unique, I have to be sure that whenever I say something or I'm going to improvise or get on the bandstand, that I make sure that it's something that's very unique and that's very thought of before I just simply say it. Um, like everything else in life that we deal with, improvisation. So what do we have? Blues, swing, improvisation are all the elements of jazz. The spirit of New Orleans, the spirit of jazz was started in New Orleans from uh, the first slaves and their drumming in Congo Square to what we have now at Jazz and Lincoln Center and Carnegie Hall and, and everywhere else. Um, so this is Swing Makes You Sing um, uh, at also from the Svetlana New York Jazz Collective, we also want to say thank you for having us. Um, let's open it up for some Q and A's. Any questions? Hey, well, I think uh, I, I think someone was uh, uh, dropped their coffee while listening to the the music and uh, and dancing. I think so. It was it was quite a quite an impact. Well, you know, that's, hey, you know, I, I'll take that. Uh, uh, I think it's an honor if we helped uh, spill some coffee. And um, I hope you didn't burn yourself, but I but I, I am happy you experienced the happiness of the coffee being spilled. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have a nice comment on the uh, on the chat which says we could be in one room uh, and not speak the same language, but yet still have a conversation through music. And I guess um that's that's so true even in, in in the kind of project that we're doing with you guys right now huh? yes yes i've actually experienced that once i was doing performing in the lima jazz festival which is really more of an international jazz festival in lima peru and the whole rhythm section the bass player the drummer and the piano player myself being the pianist and you had the horn players there we all looked at each other and we tried to communicate one thing which is what song do you want to play i asked the the the, um, the drummer who was I believe he was from Italy he did not speak English and the bassist did not speak English and we sat there we looked at each other like well how are we going to accomplish this like we don't speak the same language then one guy the saxophone player got up he pulled out his saxophone he started playing the blues everyone immediately heard him heard what he was playing the key he was playing it and jumped in and started playing we all looked at each other and laughed it was just like wow we don't really need to speak the same language in order to, you know, speak 
this language. So, um, yes, that is so very true. That's great. I mean, uh, there's another another question. I think a lot of people right now are, are quite interested in, in you know, uh, the, the New York Jazz Collective uh, that's uh, featuring you and Svetlana. So what are the upcoming shows? Uh, one of the viewers wanted to know, like, if they want to follow your shows, that's number one. Uh, where can they do that? And secondly, what's coming up? Are you guys doing any online shows? Are you doing any streams coming up after this? I'm going to pass that on to the uh, queen herself, Miss. Mm -hmm. Svetlana, go ahead. I am a queen since I'm wearing that uh, wonderful crown, but uh, we're actually so excited. We're going on tour to Florida uh, just in four weeks. Uh, some of the shows will be live streamed. People can find out information on my website, which is svetlanajazz.com. I also encourage everyone to follow uh, me on Instagram where all the information up to date as far as new music releases, um, where to stream shows is always posted. That is Svetlana Jazz. Uh, we do have new music. We have uh, a new uh, vinyl record. Very exciting. Yay, uh, here. Um, and uh, anything you would ever want to find out as far as things that are very up to date, uh, Instagram is probably the best way. Again, it's Svetlana Jazz. We're we're very excited to go on the road again, though. Willem is very happy he's from Florida. So, uh, and I just love going to Florida because it's so humid, my hair becomes even bigger. So that's that's always exciting. Mine as well, mine as uh, well. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> well, I guess uh, that was it, it was a nice session. I, I'm sure that, you know, a lot of people took uh, many takeaways from it. Um, and it's interesting to see the history of jazz in a in a, in a different way, you know. Uh, we, we normally watch these uh, full-length documentaries, but this is like completely different. And it's a, it's a nice way for a, just a lay person to know. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we try to make sure that it's digestible and to to get the um, some of the important essentials because um, we understand why it could it could be a twelve-hour documentary. Uh, there's so much information and. And no matter how much information you know, um, like from my from our perspective, there's so much more information, you know, um, within the categories, within the categories. Um, but we try to make sure that we can get it in within an hour and get some of the the bullet points and all the beauty of it, because there's so much beauty and in, in freedom in this art form we call jazz and just want to share it with everyone because, you know, why not? I mean, it only life can only get better. So. That's right. And uh, I have to say that this program was originally created for kids, but I guess there's a child in every one of us and jazz is very idealistic art form. Uh, we pursue it because we love it. And so we hope that this ignited something in you where you're excited, you're like a kid, you want to jump for joy when you listen to this music. And most of all, we hope that next year we can see you in person and, you know, Hopefully the Bahrain Jazz Festival will be in person event with a beautiful outdoor stage like you have been doing it for a few years and uh, continue supporting the music, continue supporting the Bahrain Jazz Festival and hope to see you one day soon. Well, thanks. Thanks. I mean, uh, uh, definitely, you know, the whole uh, COVID-19 lab we were talking about earlier has brought the whole world a bit more closer uh, together and it's... Um, I, I guess uh, maybe in hindsight, when we, when we were doing our outdoor festival about two years ago, we, we wouldn't have even thought of doing something like this. But uh, sure. I guess it, it, it just opens up more possibilities right now. And, and for sure, the outdoor festival is the, is the, is the grand one, right, that, that we all run um, well, at least up until 2019. So we hope to have you guys uh, playing uh, from, uh, you know, uh, flying down from the States to here and we can um, do some cool shows some cool swinging shows incidentally we do have a, a small lindy hop dance community in bahrain you know they always they always show up at our at our jazz fest and you, and you can always see them in the videos that we run uh, post mm -hmm. the festival so That's i guess beautiful. they would be the most excited you know if, if you guys would have come down well you have to be sure to let them know we say hello and uh we look forward to meeting someday we all can jam together so Excellent. Well, thank you guys for your time. It was really, um, you know, uh, an honor for us and a privilege to host you guys. 
thanks for putting everything together in, in a fun way. And uh, we hope to do more of this with you. Uh, so thank you once again. And uh, see you on the other side. Thank you. Bye, right. everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.